Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm going to add a couple of bats to this little sort of demo game. So I'm just going to draw them in this tutorial and we'll make them work in future tutorials. I'll create a new bat class. So let's create a new class called bat and click finish. And I think um, just for the moment I'm just going to draw both the kind of player's bat that the user controls and the opponent bat that the computer controls both with this bat class. So I'll make bat extend sprite and click the error and add a constructor. Well I'll just add the import for sprite and uh, I don't know what I did wrong here. Public class bat extends sprite. It looks fine to me. And yet there's an error. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, add a constructor. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So I'll just call the super constructor in the constructor. And I'll go to game. And the way that I want to use this is I'd have a private bat player and this is the bat that the actual player controls. And when I say bat, of course, I mean like a kind of tennis. Well, it's not a tennis bat, is it? But, you know, like a cricket bat um, that hits the ball. And we'll have one called opponent. And then wherever I reference the ball, I'm going to have to reference the player and the opponent, basically, pretty much. So let's have a new player, a new... Um, yeah, a new player and a new opponent. That's spelt wrong. Opponent. My brain is uh, is evidently not working. Oh, that should be bat. In fact, please bear with me. Getting there in the end. Okay. There we go. So we're creating um, new bat objects and. The error here is that, yeah, this has to be player and opponent. I think the cold here is maybe affecting my brain. It's like minus five or something, and I've just been out on it. And let's go down here and init the player and the opponent. So this is going to be player and opponent. So in the init method of game, where we initialize the ball, we also initialize the player and the opponent bats. I'm not going to give the player or opponent update methods just yet and they may not both need them and I'm going to say player.draw player.draw on the canvas and bat.draw on the canvas now I have to also initialize these with the correct ah, opponent.draw ok there we go that's right. Okay, now I have to initialize these with the correct images. So uh, at the moment I'm using the ball image, which is no good. So let's load the bat image that I've got, and I'll use the same image for both. So I'll copy the ball stuff, and I'll change that to bat image and bat shadow. And I'll for the bat image, I want um, it's called bat, and it's in the drawable folder. And I've got a bat shadow in a drawable folder as well. And I think I'll, I'll leave the other settings the same. So for player, we want bat image, bat shadow, bat shadow. And for the opponent, we also want bat image, bat shadow. And I don't know what the offset of the shadow should be, but we'll try the same one as the ball for a start. Now, if I were to run this, it, uh, what, did, what would it determine whether, where they appear on the screen would be that in sprite here I've, um, I'm have i setting the location of a sprite to 30 pixels well to 30, 30 the coordinate 30, 30 basically by default which uh, isn't, isn't really so good and uh, I want to think about actually where the ball should appear initially but I'll worry about that probably later on and um, what I'd like to do here is make sure that um, the the player and opponent bats initially appear 
in the center of the screen. So if I go to the screencast here, I want the player to appear roughly here in the middle in the center and the opponent to appear roughly here in the middle in the center. So to position themselves, the bats have to know the size of the screen. Otherwise, how can they know where the left edge is, for example? How can they know um, what's halfway vertically unless they know the size of the screen? And when I construct a sprite, I'm passing it its width and its height. And if I look at the sprite constructor, the width and the height is set there. And that's where I'm setting the width and the height of the ball. Uh, sorry, the position of the ball. So I, I guess, um, yeah, I was going to say what I could do is I could, in the bat constructor, I could then, after calling super, I could position the bat. But the problem with that is that the way I've written it, we, we don't know the size of the bat at that point. And the coordinates, X and Y, refer to the top left-hand corner of the image, not the center of the image. So if I were to position X and Y at half of the screen uh, width, so let's say half the screen height and um, you know 30 or something for X, it's not going to be halfway down the screen. The top left-hand corner of it will be halfway down the screen. What the, the information that I need to position the back correctly is both the screen width, the screen height, and also the actual bitmap sizes that I only get in the init method. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that the init method can access the size of the screen and the height, uh, which it can. I think I might have just added this after the last tutorial as well. So um, I, I had definitely, I was passing the screen width and screen height to the constructor. And I think I might just have added this. So if you're following this along step by step, you might want to add this now. Just make sure that after you pass the screen width and screen height into the constructor, you have a private screen width and screen, screen height in sprite.java and you initialize it from the values that are passed into the constructor because that will mean that you can then access those values in the init method. And then I'm going to go to my bat.java and I'm going to right click and go to source override implement methods and override the init method from sprite. And I'll call the superclass method and now I can initialize my bat location. In fact, what I'll also do is I'll go to sprite here because I've made screen width and screen height member variables. I made them private. I'm just going to go down here. Yeah, we've got to get screen width and get screen height. And uh, perhaps I added those in a previous tutorial. Um, I, I can't remember, um, but I might have just added them just um, like an hour ago off off outside this video, I don't know. But anyway, once you've got those, then in init, you could then say, um, well, let's, let's say that we want to position the bat either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. So what I'll do is I'll give this a public enum position, and I'll give this the values left and right. And then I'll have a private private variable of type position called position. And I'll initialize that somewhere. So let's say that the bat, maybe the constructor, could take like a um, position position. And then I can say here in the constructor, this dot position equals position. And now if I save that, we should get an error in game.java. And right where I initialize the bat, the bats, then I can say for the player, let's say bat.position.left. And for the opponent, I'll, I will set that to bat.position.right. And save that. And now back in bat.java, so we've got this posi private um, position, which is this enum type, set to something meaningful. And then in init, I can say if position equals position.left, then where would we position the bat? Well, 
Let's say that we want it some distance from the left hand edge of the screen. Let's have a private static final int margin and set that equal to, let's try 20. And I, I want this to specify the distance of a bat on the left from the left hand edge or a bat on the right from the right hand edge of the screen. So if the bat's positioned on the left, then we can say that the x position, I can say set x, should be the margin. That's pretty simple. Is that right? Yeah, I, th I think that's right. And then the y position, set y, that's going to be a little bit more complex because we need to take the screen height divided by 2. Screen height divided by 2 will give us, um, oh, I need to say get screen height because the, this method, um, because screen height is private in the parent class, so I can't access it directly here, but I can access the accessor method. So get screen height divided by two. Then I need to subtract from that, and I need to subtract something um, like half of the height of the actual bat itself to get that to be actually in the middle of the screen. Um, so to do that, um, there's this get bounds method, I think, get, get uh, uh, rect, maybe? Yeah, get rect. Get rect is set, I think, in sprite, in init, sprite.init. It's set to the bounding rectangle of the whole image. So if I say get minus get rect dot center, y, I think that will do the trick because get rec dot center y, this, this gives me the y position with um, the zero of y being the top edge of the graphic. So this is, um, this is um, you, you might even, if, if you haven't done this kind of stuff before, you might even want to sort of draw it out to get your head around it. But if you imagine that the graphic is well, let's, let's go to the, the image here. Imagine that this whole thing is a bat graphic, this whole screen. Then the zero of y will be the top edge here, and the center, the, the center y will be a position down here. And if, if from the top edge to the center is, say, 200 pixels, then center y will be 200. So by subtracting that from the center position vertically on the screen, we position the center of the bat in the center of the screen. And I feel I'm not explaining this very well, but if you draw it out, hopefully you'll see that that's the case. And let's let's go on here and do the, the right position. So I'll say if position equals position dot right, that's position capital P dot right. Then, um, actually, the Y position is going to be the same. So I can just take that out and put it up here. It's only the X position that's different. And the X position will be set X. And I need to say, well, it should be get screen width negative margin minus the margin. But again, we've got the same problem because this will position the top left-hand corner or the, the left-hand edge, if you like, of the sprite at this particular X position. And I don't want to position the left-hand edge. I want to position the center of the sprite at this position. So therefore, I have to subtract half the width of the sprite. And um, just to make this a bit clearer, I'll put brackets around all this. And I'll subtract get rect dot center x to again subtract this is this is basically amounts to half the width of the sprite and this is half the height of the sprite basically uh, so I think that's okay that's all okay we've got um, some sort of error here let's just take a look um, I meant to say else if and I'll save that and I think I think this is all good so if I run this now with a bit of luck we're going to see the bats appearing on the screen. And if it all looks good, the next step now could be to actually um, start making a move. 
and we also need to attend to the position of the ball and I think I'm, I'm probably going to do something similar with the ball as well and I'll maybe give it a random direction to start with so let's just take a look at my screencast now and there we go um, we've got bats um, well you can see where they are and I think that looks just about right they're, they're quite big actually it looks better on my phone once more and uh, since this is just a demo game and I'm not intending it to be the latest smash hit game I'm just going to leave it at this because it demonstrates the principle um, reasonably well okay so that's it for this tutorial um, I hope you could follow that and I hope my explanation wasn't too convoluted and until next time happy coding